The company Playtime was founded by a talented man named Elliot Ludwig. Despite going through a divorce, his heart remained devoted to family. This dedication led him to create fantastic toys for children worldwide. Ludwig spent countless hours tirelessly working at the factory, continuously improving and innovating his products. In 1960, the unexpected departure of a family member pushed Ludwig to the brink of despair. However, his ambition within the toy industry propelled him to overcome adversity and steer the Playtime toy company to greater heights. How did this man overcome challenges and establish the world's largest toy factory? The answer will be revealed in today's video. The name Ludwig means, glory of a warrior, and true to his name, Elliot Ludwig is indeed a warrior. With the motto, nothing satisfies my soul more than being the reason for a child's smile, becoming the spark that lights up their dreams and hopes. We, those little boys and girls, everything, the company, and even the toys here would be nothing without them, Elliot founded Playtime Company in 1930, paving the way for a renowned toy empire in the eastern United States and beyond. In the early 50s, Playtime Company's first toy, Poppy Playtime, officially entered the market. Poppy, with her red hair, petite figure, wearing a blue and white dress and black shoes, resembled a little princess. Not to mention, Poppy's body was equipped with a voice module, allowing the doll to interact with children through pre-programmed phrases. Poppy's distinctiveness not only brought a breath of fresh air to the toy industry but also revolutionized the era of the industry. Consequently, the doll quickly became a must-have toy for girls, bringing Playtime Company enormous revenue and establishing itself as the iconic mascot of the company at that time. Following the success of Poppy, other toys were introduced, such as the giant dinosaur Braun in 1961, the whimsical music box Boxy Boo in 1966, and Candy Cat in 1979. The most notable, however, was the long-armed plush toy line Huggy Wuggy and Kissy Missy in the 80s, becoming the best-selling toys of the decade. Entering the 90s, Mommy Long Legs and Boggy Bot swiftly overshadowed the Huggy and Wuggy duo, becoming the most popular toys of that time. During those years, Playtime Company experienced tremendous growth, nearly becoming the powerhouse of the toy industry. In addition to toy production, Elliot also established an orphanage to care for underprivileged children. Despite the initial success and anticipation of further growth, the glory of Playtime Co. began showing signs of decline. Around the 1990s, the company's profits significantly decreased, leading Playtime Company's leadership to hold a meeting to find ways to increase labor force while cutting costs for the company. Dr. Harley Sawyer proposed a solution to use giant toys to replace some of the labor force. After this solution was accepted, Playtime Company built additional game stations to test and conduct experiments on the children from the company's orphanage. Firstly, they took the children to the play area, gave them a toy, and asked them to complete three small games. These games were designed to test the children's problem-solving abilities, reaction speed, and physical endurance and strength. Scientists observed and recorded the experiments in the observation room, and the results were then sent to Playcare Regional Director, Stella Graber, for further screening. Those children who excelled in the tests would proceed to the next stage at Playcare. Although built as a miniature orphanage with all necessary facilities such as schools, hospitals, dormitories, and a play area, Playcare is, in reality, the gateway to the nightmares of the selected children. Here, they will be subjected to Playtime Company's team of scientists using an addictive gas, combined with electric shock therapy, to transform them into toys, replacing the company's workforce. On March 30, 1991, numerous experimental products were put into use in the Playtime factory. Notable among them was Experiment 1170, the giant Huggy Wuggy taking on the role of a factory security guard, Experiment 1222, Mommy Long Legs overseeing the game area server, and Boxy Boo taking on the role of eliminating low-level employees who knew too much. Initially, everything went smoothly but complaints from many visitors about feeling intensely observed by Huggy Wuggy increased. A large number of tourists believed that Playtime had installed surveillance cameras in Huggy Wuggy's eyes, secretly recording them. However, it was clear that this was not the real reason for the feeling of being observed, 
and Playtime Company was trying to cover up the true purpose. However, there are always those curious about the unknown, and Rowan Stoll is one of them. He delved into the secrets that Playtime Co. was hiding, or more accurately, the illegal experiments on their orphan children. Playtime Company quickly discovered this and instead of negotiating, or pretending to negotiate peacefully, they decided to eliminate Rowan before he knew too much. An employee of Playtime, or someone, deliberately tampered with Rowan's car, causing him to nearly lose his life in a car crash. Although Rowan had not delved too deep into the company's secrets, he realized that things were spiraling out of control, and his life was in danger. To ensure that what he knew wouldn't be forgotten or covered up by Playtime Company, he recorded a tape, intending to upload it as evidence, hoping that someone would find it and hand it over to the police. But before he could do so, Rowan was killed by Boxy Boo on July 20, 1991, just before he could upload the evidence to the archives. Thanks to silencing him in time, Playtime Company maintained its reputation and quickly entered a golden period on May 5, 1992. However, a month later, on June 18, 1992, Playtime co-employees received news that Huggy Wuggy had escaped from the factory overnight, prompting them to send someone to handle the situation. As a result, to bring back Huggy Wuggy, five employees lost their lives, and six others were missing. The upper management team of Playtime Co. did not show much joy about this incident, as it caused them to blame their staff for that disastrous oversight. Later, when checking surveillance cameras, it was discovered that on that night, Huggy Wuggy ran to a suburban house, implying that the soul of the child residing within Huggy Wuggy was trying to find its way back to a familiar place. No one knew about this chaotic pursuit, and Playtime Company continued to develop normally until a famous incident occurred. In 1994, Director of Innovation and Creativity Leith Pierre wrote an email complaining about the red gas emitted by catnaps. On August 8, 1995, a large-scale riot of experiments, known as the Joyful Hour, took place. Many scientists and Playtime co-employees lost their lives, while some fortunate ones successfully escaped the factory. As we know from the trailer of Chapter 3, Catnaps highly reveres the prototype, Experiment 1006, so it's uncertain whether the red gas events of Catnaps and the Joyful Hour are related. All that is known is that after this event, Playtime Company was forced to close, whether they wanted to or not. Director Leith Pierre spent a significant amount to hire daring individuals to collect toy parts, this also sets the stage for the co-op game, Project Playtime, by Mob Entertainment. To confront Playtime, the monster faction led by 1006 dispatched creatures like Huggy Wuggy, Boxy Boo, Mommy Long Legs to impede their progress. Ultimately, when the human casualties became too much, Playtime Company decided to cease sending people to this location. This might seem like good news, but the monsters created by Playtime, except for 1006, need sustenance to survive, so Playtime's action was akin to cutting off their life source. Therefore, the larger creatures started to consume weaker ones of their kind to survive. By 2005, players, in the role of former Playtime company employees, decided to return to this place after receiving letters from other employees, stating that they were still trapped inside. What follows is what you experienced in Poppy Playtime 1 and 2, but I won't delve too deep into it. Instead, let's move on to the Playtime Company staff and the iconic monsters in this place, to give you the most comprehensive view of the Poppy Playtime universe before the official release of Chapter 3. The high-level leadership team of Playtime Company as of the current time, we know that there are a total of 22 individuals associated with Playtime Company, including its founder Elliot Ludwig. Among them, seven high-ranking leaders have been revealed in Poppy Playtime 2, and they are more or less connected to the dark history of Playtime Company. Let's start with Elliot Ludwig, the founder of Playtime Company who turned it into a toy production powerhouse. In the past, Elliot had a wife named Molly, but they divorced, and Elliot never mentioned his ex-wife again. Despite the significant loss of a family member in 1960, Elliot's passion for his work remained unbroken. By 1991, when the company's experiments were exposed, Elliot was nearing the age of 90. Therefore, there are speculations that Elliot might be the prototype, the ultimate boss of the game. 
Below Elliot are the four managers overseeing the Playtime toy manufacturing plant. Their names can be seen prominently on the gates in the first and second parts of the game. First is Leith Pierre, holding the highest authority at Playtime and working directly under Elliot, overseeing all employees. Despite his high position, Leith is not well liked by subordinates due to his hot-tempered and sometimes oppressive nature. However, he is dedicated to his work and takes pride in being part of Playtime. Naturally, in his position, Leith must be aware of the inhumane experiments of the company and even support them. It was Leith who concealed footage related to the monsters from employees trying to uncover the company's secrets. Next is Stella Graber, a kind-hearted and enthusiastic girl believed to have a deep love for children, aiming to provide them with a happy childhood. Stella's exact role in playtime is unclear, but it is known that all research reports on the children in the play area had to be sent to her. She likely oversees playcare and is one of the heads responsible for supervising and researching experiments. Eddie M. N. Ritterman, an unidentified man temporarily confirmed as the head of research at Playtime, remains a mystery, and there is not much information about him currently. However, we have Harley Sawyer, the chief operating officer of Playtime, who proposed the idea of conducting experiments to create giant toys and has a close connection with Eddie. Like Leith, Harley is extremely dedicated to playtime to the extent that he is willing to sacrifice innocent children to prolong the fading glory of playtime company. It's not surprising to discover that Harley is not only the chief operating officer but also an experienced Ph.D. in scientific research. He is likely directly involved, or at least partially, in the company's experiments. Next is Jimmy Roth, the marketing director of playtime a rather arrogant and conceited person who always attributes the company's massive capital to his outstanding marketing abilities. Although reluctant, it must be acknowledged that Jimmy's marketing skills are one of the reasons Playtime has achieved its current success. Like others, he is aware of the company's experiments and tries to cover them up with the media. Finally, though not part of the powerful quartet at Playtime, still an important figure in the Playtime universe is the head of the security team. Responsible for reporting employee departures to Leith Pierre, the security team leader not only ensures safety and prevents outsiders from infiltrating playtime but also manages workforce mobilization, handling past riots caused by Huggy Wuggy. At the current moment, no one knows the fate of these high-ranking employees, and their whereabouts remain a mystery. All that is known is that these employees are missing, possibly somewhere in the abandoned playtime toy manufacturing plant. As for the player, that's us, the one who has decided to venture into danger to uncover the truth, certainly isn't a simple character. Throughout parts 1 and 2, we can see that the player is determined and unafraid, not backing down in the face of anything. However, the true purpose of the player remains unknown, whether they aim to rescue the unfortunate trapped employees or hide some wrongdoing. Because, you know, it's hard to believe that someone would willingly expose themselves to danger to save strangers, isn't it? Unknown mysteries you might not know first, regarding the Poppy introduction video. If you've watched the entire video, you might think it's just a harmless advertisement, and there's no need to worry or pay much attention to it. However, international players quickly realized that there was something wrong with the commercial. After rewinding the video, their suspicions were confirmed to be valid. The reason is that instead of the initially cheerful and harmless words, you will hear terrifying sentences coming from Poppy. Release me, you can't escape anymore, help me, he intends to keep me here forever, and uh, we will take the lives of all of you. Is this just an unintentional effect due to the Doppler effect, or is Mob Entertainment quietly telling us that Poppy is not as harmless as we think? Perhaps we have to wait until part 3 is officially released to find the answer. Another mystery recently discovered by the fan community is the text lines requesting players to quickly leave this place in part 1. These words appear densely in pipes and dangerous areas with various colors, so many fans believe that the one who left these instructions is the unicorn crafty corn from the smiling critter's scented plush line in part 3. Because if you remember, crafty once held a colored pencil in the latest trailer, and if this unicorn is the one who left those instructions, could she be on our side? Next, not exactly a mystery but a relatively popular community hypothesis lately is from an account named Natasha. Remember the first time we met Poppy, the doll was confined inside a glass cage under a virtual red light. 
Natasha believes that the cage is not enough to contain Poppy, so there may be something else placed inside the cage that prevents the doll from getting out. The weapon Natasha hypothesized to be in the cage is the red gas with sleep-inducing effects emitted by catnap. So, after the cage is opened, players lose consciousness for a while, and then Poppy wakes them up. But if that's the case, who is the one releasing the gas? Is Catnap actively doing this to keep Poppy confined under the prototype's orders, or is there another mystery we haven't discovered yet? Share your speculations, and let's wait for part 3 to be released in the future. And that concludes the timeline of Poppy Playtime in general and Playtime Co. in particular. Did you enjoy today's video? If so, please leave a comment below to let me know. For now, goodbye, and see you in the upcoming videos.